Hello everyone, we're back again with an update on the Yaw 2 Pro build. I do believe I have everything dialed in with the build completely now. <clears throat> I've got my son Jax here modeling the setup for us. Just got a little uh, DCS in the background. Uh, again, for anybody that's new here, this is a Yaw 2 Pro with rotation. Um, got it, uh, I don't know, a few weeks ago and put it together. Um, I put my own uh, Jegs Poly Racing seat from an actual race car. These are legitimate Jegs five-point harness from the same race car. It's got a seat cover. I uh, found a pull-to-eject handle for his five-point harness here, which is pretty sweet. It actually works. I'm going to pull it, Jax. All right. See, pops it right open <clears throat> if you want to pull it out fast. So the other cool thing, the uh, unit comes with an emergency switch tag, which is this orange thing right here. It's a magnetic uh, little little whatchamacallit, and it attaches to the USB ports magnetically, and it's a magnetic switch, and if it's disconnected, it will uh, immediately shut the unit off. It's an emergency power down. So what I did is I had a custom tag embroidered, which is, says emergency stop, hooked it up, and then tucked the little end into the uh, lap belt, which is bolted to the base. So it's like a little handle, right? But it doesn't do anything if the seatbelt jiggles, it stays on, but he can yank it off in a second. You reach down with your, wait, let me put it on, Jackson. All right, great deal. And then the best way to do this is just tuck this little end right up in the seat belt here. Yeah, if I can get it in. Jax, hang on. There. So, there you go. Reach down, Jax. He can just feel it. And he can just pull it. Go ahead. And, it, and the machine would immediately stop. So that's cool. Um, you can do that on Amazon. They make little custom embroidered tags. This little tag's on Amazon. So, yeah, Jeg seat, so it's super stiff. It's a poly seat. My little homemade Hotaz mounts out of those bathroom uh, modern industrial shelf uh, brackets. Um, Toro lawnmower weight and two 20-pound disc weights from a barbell. I have everything all wired up. So this is for the HF8 haptic seat that's just the power button that is plugged in to the chair right here the chair has power so you don't have to worry about running cords it's got usb there's the other side of the seat belt the lap belt shoulder belts come through the seat under there and hook down in with the weights i'm going to go through all the wiring to the head uh, in a minute the unit, like I said, plugs into the uh, wall, and then the upper unit's powered by the lower unit, and then a USB to the computer for all the signal stuff. So we went with an A10 Thrustmaster. This is my little homemade left-handed mouse situation, which works really good for flying. <clears throat> little magnet brackets, really strong, but I can move it around. I completely modified the foot plate i took all their underneath hardware off and just bolted the main plate to the feet you can bolt down here you can drill through the legs but do not drill through the legs up here because you'll compromise the strength you got to leave all that but under here it's fine because you're on the ends but yeah i just did that because it worked with these pedals better the way they sit so your feet feel good this way <clears throat> and then as far as the keyboard mount those are uh desk hotaz mount plates they're in my other videos if you don't know what i'm talking about they go under a like a joystick or whatever and slide around those are not from anything this is a police car laptop mount that i modified into a keyboard mount cut some stuff off wired everything up nice and clean Joystick is positioned perfect. We floated it in the air and then built the stand in that position so it fits your arm exactly right. Their Hotaz plates bolt flat out from this plate, so they're way down here. They're like way lower than this. 
they're way off and they want you to use them that no way. So I moved everything. Mine are lighter, stiffer, and they're in the right position. So there's my little custom emergency stop. Everything's wired up. So now I want to talk about how I wired everything. <clears throat> this is uh, when you do a yaw chair, you, the computer base stations have to track both the chair and the head independently. So what you need to do is put a chair tracking unit on the chair itself, independent of your VR head. You can use a VR controller to do this. So you want to mount that like so, right? You put a VR controller. <clears throat> now there's 10,000 ways you'll see online to do this. This is what I uh, kind of came up with thinking about it because I wanted to copy my keyboard mount, kind of mimic that. So I looked around, looked like, looked for camera action mounts, things like that. So the idea here, you know, he can reach up, touch the buttons. The sensors for the, for the uh, trackers are all right here. It's, it's way up in the air. It's never not going to be seen. It is also the way I have it set up. It is bolted directly to the poly chair over top of the seat cover, but it is extremely stiff. This is all aluminum, milled aluminum. And I, I ordered some random parts. I figured out what fit together. I'll tell you which, what they are in a minute. But they all bolt together. It's super stiff. All these little gears in here are metal. It's not plastic. This is hard. So Jax, back up. Put your arms down, Jax, please. So you'll see, I can touch the top of the controller here and watch his chair. I'll try to, you know, I can literally like move him back and forth. This is extremely stiff. Oh, you can see him wiggling. All right, so that doesn't move at all. And uh, yeah, so it'll track nice. You want it in exact sync with the chair. So you don't want it hanging off the sides. You would never like mount it on this. This doesn't matter if it wiggles slightly, but you would, wouldn't mount a tracker on it because you don't want it moving relative to your body. You want it exactly like your shoulders. So it should be completely stiff. And this is just a super clever little mount situation I figured out. And so what we got there, <clears throat> so we're gonna go in close. I'm gonna show you some details. <clears throat> So you want to isolate your vibration. So if you look in here, let's see. I got bad light in here, but we'll get it. There we go. So if you look in here, you'll see these like what look like rubber layers right down in there. That is called sorbethane. You can order a roll of it on Amazon. It's pretty expensive, but it is actually designed from the get-go as a material to absorb vibration. Because the thing is, these chairs vibrate. You know, you have your butt kicker down here. Initially, I thought maybe I'll mount it somewhere over here, but no way, because the butt kicker shakes the pedals intentionally, and you do not want this shaking. Because it, these sensors are, are uh, accurate enough that if this vibrates too much, it will affect your image in your lenses and just, you know, you'll feel like you have astigmatism or something. So you want this nice and still. So the idea is to, in between the clamp and the chair, is to put that sorbethane. You put a little, <clears throat> the clamp itself comes with rubber pads like inside there. And then what I did on top of that is put a layer of really good like Gorilla Double Stick. On the inside of the clamp put it on there so like the little robot grippers were sticky then on top of that you put the layer of the sorbethane so then the inside of the clamp is unsticky because the sorbethane layer sticks to the double stick which sticks to the clamp but the layer of sorbethane the side of the sorbethane that touches the chair is not sticky so you can immediately just take the clamp off and it works like a robot hand. You can see how it's gripping the chair. You twist this red knob and it just works exactly like you think it does. It just grabs like a robot. And it's all aluminum. Everything's milled so you can get it really tight. And then <clears throat> from there, found this other mount. <clears throat> Same sort of thing. And then I just another little 
uh, super clamp up here and then there, here you have your uh, index controller. Now you might ask why I mounted it in this particular orientation. Well, as you can see, you don't want it anywhere near his head. You got to have it up high so the trackers are always seeing it. Initially, I was thinking of tucking it on like the right, but I figure there's going to be a, a hundred times a minute where it's not going to track. So you got to just get it up high. The buttons are on the right side, so Jax, he can reach up with his right arm and touch the buttons and reset the view. <clears throat> Excuse me. And again, if you look in the C clamp or in the super clamp, you got your Gorilla Double Stick and your Sorbethane. So what that is, here's like Gorilla Double Stick, right? Just get the really good stuff. You want the best stuff. Sorbethane looks like this. Comes in a little box. It's a black roll. You just cut little pieces off. It's not sticky at all. It just feels like silicone or something. But this is the good stuff. This is superior to silicone. This is the material of choice for vibration isolation. It's specifically designed for it. Not sticky at all. It's just it's completely just rubbery. So yeah, on the clamps down there, vibration isolation. But the unit is extremely stiff, right? You know, I can shake him with it. You know, even up here, I can just rock him from that. So that thing is not moving. That's really light. Now, the reason I mounted the joystick here, number one, the button he can reach. Number two, on this particular style of controller, this little shaft in between the sensor and the palm grip, this little part is metal and there's nothing in it. It's a pure support as opposed to this stuff, which has electronics and sensors and whatever else. So you don't want to squeeze parts that are plastic, right? This is the only part that's like solid metal. It's like very thin too, right? It's just a little bar, like a band of metal. So it's the perfect spot to squeeze it as hard as you want. You're not going to hurt it. And then, uh, yeah. So again, really stiff, no plastic, right? So it's bracket, sorbethane, metal, super stiff, metal gears, metal, metal, bracket, sorbethane isolator right to the poly because the poly chair is super hard you know it's hard as a rock which is directly bolted to the seat pan down here to this metal plate so it's as stiff and as still as you're going to get a controller to that bottom plate down there which is what you want so now the wiring itself so just for review, there's that HF8 over the racing seat under the seat belts. This seat under here is super hard, like sitting on hard ass plastic. You just heard it. So we, we bought like this little like tailbone saver, $30, you know, memory foam thing and uh, put it underneath the haptic seat above the racing seat. So you still get your butt shook. But your butt is also cushioned from the bottom. Plus, it gives him a little more height. It helps out. So, again, super fun and useful pull to eject. Super fun and useful emergency stop. Oops, you can see how that's loose. That wouldn't work. You want that flat. Yeah, now it'll go. Okay, so, wiring. So, for whatever reason, I tried to plug my hotazes in down here. You know, it plugs in all the way down, goes through all that. I could not get my rudder pedals to track or locate in DCS. I could get my throttle and joystick, but not my rudder oh, pedals. Well, the throttle work? <laughs> or whatever. I mean, whatever. Like two of the four worked or something. For no reason at all. We have everything wired right. So I, I tested it, checked them out. Everything runs. So what I did is I just took them off and then I rewired everything up through the top over there. So that's the devil's in the details, right? So what we got going on here, like I said, you're probably wondering why I didn't join everything up into like one column. You don't want to do that because number one, it's it starts torquing on the neck. Number two, Jax, I'm just going to let it kind of speak for itself with the movements here. Just do maximum movements while you're strapped in. Pretend you're playing. 
you know, even undo your belts so they can see if you really overdo it, like ridiculous amount. And then, uh, yeah, so you'll see how this like contraption works back up enough. So what you got there on the top, see him really digging? But you see how he has slack in every direction here. And what you have is those supports. And I'll go through this in detail. What, what we have here, the reason there's a bunch of wires is the sound comes from the computer to the headset. And then I have the headset sound split. One unit, uh, one part of the sound goes to the actual headphones. The other portion of the sound is wired down through this black wire right here, down to the haptic seat, so it is in sync with the audio. You can do it two ways. The haptic seat goes via USB, so you can do the software stuff, or you can sync it with the audio. I have it synced with the audio. I prefer it. They're both good, but uh, I just like the way it feels better because the butt kicker is also synced in with the audio which is synced in with that woofer. So all three are in audio sync. So it feels really good in the chair. It's all in harmony. Anywho, um, so as you can see, watch him move around. <clears throat> so I need the one wire going to the haptic seat, but I also need the wire from the wall amp to the butt kicker, which is that speaker wire. So that's coming in from there. The haptics going in from his head. Then that joins up with the main lines. The other line here is going to be your keyboard and your hotas now that I would have had on the side down here, but it didn't work. So I just rewired it. Now you don't want this all connected with the head because it doesn't work. You want this nice and stiff. This is just a random bracket I had. I just wire, you know, do whatever with this. There's some USB connectors if I want to disconnect stuff, you know, what, you know, just kind of whatever you want to do. Use this as a little guide, the pole, but it's completely out of the way of the joystick. And then it all just joins up. Now up here I strategically located a uh, ceiling hook. These are those extendable janitor keychains. Now how I did this, I like the slack that one of these has. It's got like the perfect tension for this particular setup, but I wanted more distance. So what I did, I kind of, I bought another one and sort of, so to speak, wired it in series, just hung one off the other, which gives you the same amount of tension as one in total, but it gives you twice as much distance. So that allows for this chair to spin in 360 going around the room without an issue, without any tightness. Now, if you look over here, I have another hook, you know, where the cable goes over to the computer. There's a little mess I gotta clean up. But yeah, there's your i9-4090, super duper, overclock, whamma jamma, she's quick. But anyway, so these are the ceiling hook, climbing uh, brackets. Clips, I mean, and then uh, it's uh, hooked via a zip tie right there. So it doesn't move. It looks like it's loose in there, but you'll see how it holds it, right? So that way this little section stays nice and even. It doesn't slip and slide. So you don't get any tug on these cables because I want these to be nice and, you know, you don't want to pull on that. So that's why that's there to prevent the chair from pulling the cable any further than this. You see, it's tight. It won't let it happen. So, all your slack is behind this. This is tight to here, cannot move that way. All your slack is up here. This is relatively tight. And then you have all this. This can go way up and it can extend way down, like way down by his head. You know, I got like, that's probably six feet almost. So, I'll, uh, I'll push him in a circle here if I can, and you'll see how it works. So again, computer, hard tied there, double series wired janitor clippies, separated the head and the keyboard and Hotaz, joystick hard mounted. So anyway, oh yeah, those, those parts. So the bottom, clip 
is called, that's this red handled larger clip. This is a larger clip than the one that comes up here, and that's intentional. This one fits better on the chair. I think this is called a super clamp. I think it does like a quarter inch plus three eighths inch standard for photos. And then this arm unit, which unbelievably the top of this handle has the right threaded screw holes for the bottom of this pole. So it fits right in. So you can do robot hand by twisting this. This just ties in tight. This is completely universal, universal in its articulation. You can put this wherever you want. I'm not going to take it apart because I got it all set up. But this is a ball joint, that's a ball joint, and this is another joint. You just unscrew this, it's perfect. And it gets super stiff, man. It's like a rock. So the upper super clamp comes with this post. This piece here is separate. So the uh, post itself, the articulating post, is called a Toazo 11-inch adjustable articulating friction magic arm super clamp set. Toazo is spelled T-O-A-Z-O-E. Um, sorbethane, this stuff right here, is S-O-R-B-O-T-H-A-N-E. It's a strip. And then, um, like I said, this clamp, and it all just bolts together. You get various little, you know, knickknacks and parts with it, and you just figure out what works for you. Check your sizes on your stuff first. Okay, anyway, so let's see if I can back this up enough. Just give you a kick. But you'll see as he spins, right, you're not getting any interference. See, everything stays out of the way. As he spins, the way it's rigged, this joystick always stays under this little loop because the way I got everything tied, right? This is right over the middle where he like never is unless he leans all the way forward, right? It's like kind of like right under your, you know, the base of your crotch belt, somewhere up above that. And so it tugs it to the right. And then I stiffened it out the back with that pull to keep it off the chair, away from everything. You do not, you know, you want to be careful of this. You want to make sure this stays stiff. This is, a, this is an if, because if this cord is pulling too hard, you may jiggle your cable. So this could be a no-no. I'm going to test it. You may want to separate your cables that go to the computer from this pole because in theory you shouldn't have anything touching this but it's so stiff it doesn't move like it's like it doesn't do anything so i'm going to try it like that because it's cleaner but that could be a problem if you do that and your k and this post isn't stiff as a board and this cord this from above pulls it it's going to jiggle it relative to your chair so watch out for that but uh another little trick i did with these cables coming off the back of your head that have to go down to the haptic and the butt kicker. They have to come off the head, but I don't want them going down here. So I pulled them up, tied it like this. You can see where I like kind of side tied these so I can disconnect. And then down here, this cable would always get caught in your neck. So I hooked it high. And then under here, I made up this little, it's the opposite of these things. So this is using the spring to pull up. So I was like, I want one that pulls down. So I was like, well, pull it down, weight will. So I hooked a, I just took a bunch of washers and one of those little like Velcro clips and a zip tie and I just tied it at the right height. I tuned it and then the top of the HF8 has these little straps that are useless in our case. So I tied the right and the left together into a loop, right? And I ran those cables down through here, which keeps these cables centered so they don't fall away from the chair. I did another little very loose safety thing. You'll notice how there's no zip ties on it because I want those smooth. And then I have the weight nice and low. It won't go too low. Lean all the way back, Jack, as far backwards as you can. See, the weight doesn't hit anything. Now, lean all the way forwards. All the way. See how the weight goes up? Hold, hold forward, Jax. 
the weight goes up, but it still doesn't touch anything up there, so I tuned it so it doesn't go too high or too low. Now when he leans back, see the cable here follows the weight down, and it follows it up from the spring up and the cable from the weight down, so it keeps it away from your head. Jax, go back and forth four or five times. Watch, watch it all in slow motion how it works. Keep doing it. Lean to the right and the left. So notice you got your top spring loads and your bottom weight load. Keeps everything out of the way, keeps it out of the way of the controller, keeps it out of the way when you're spinning the chair. Sorry for the sideways video, but I was trying to get it all in one shot there. You can pause it. Um, yeah, so that's, I think this is a really good way to set this all up. Um, if you guys have any thoughts on this, please do comment. This is a ton of work, but I hope this helps people. Um, in anybody's setup, I mean, this doesn't have to be a motion chair or a, you know, it would apply to just about anything with a VR. If you're trying to set up some sort of a look around, swingy, tracky thing, you know, this is kind of what you want to do. So now we just tune this hog to uh, DCS. So, yeah, uh, it was kind of funny. The first moment I was, in, you know, typical male, didn't read the directions, so I did not mount that. And I tried to play DCS with no chair tracker, just my head. So the chair movements, the game thought was me moving my head. Oh, so it was, yeah, I went for a ride, man. I learned real quick how powerful this is. Um, pulled the uh, ripcord. You definitely do not want to stand anywhere near it when somebody's riding it. You definitely, I'm going to put some caution tape. I'll try to do a little cool caution tapey thing to lay out where it is but uh, it's about seven feet maybe of a maybe a danger zone seven and a half eight feet again um, let's let's do a push around here there we go see I'm gonna now you'll be able to see this you'll see how this works you see now you can get away with a few twists you don't want to go too far maybe five six twists the, mach the yaw will, will know what it's doing, and you can uh, program it to go back to zero so you don't twist your cord. And you can set it to not turn as much or go however many degrees back and forth you want. But again, we'll go to the left. Oops. But you'll see how nothing, nothing catches, and it just floats. And this all works with the weights here. Everything's smooth and buttery. Got the sweet... Good, good uh, pedals. Got the butt kicker, the chair vibrates, and the haptic seat. So you got triple vibration going on, 360 rotation, police car. There you go. So hopefully this helps people. I'm going to go real slow up and through here so you can see exactly what I'm doing. All right. Sarbathane layers in there underneath that little clearish layer of double stick on the metal portion of the controller because you can clamp it hard. Two spring clamp keychains wired in series. So washer weights just tied in with zip ties if you have to run a cable off the head somewhere. Those little parts I told you about. They go right together, no issues. You don't need anything. So she's ready to go now. I have to go back in and test it with this thing on there um, because that's what I was missing before. But in theory, this is done. So that's really exciting. Um, we're gonna go for it. So thank you for watching. Um, please see my other videos if you're new here. It goes all the way back to a desktop hotas to this rig. So this is about as good as I can think to make it. There goes the five point harness, pull it off. It actually does work really fast, just like it should in a real race car. 
So, Jax, do you want to hold the keyboard? I'm going to show you how cool this keyboard mount is. Way better than what Yaw has. Hold the keyboard up. So you can do it. You just unlock this, pull it towards you. Just, just a light. Whoops, maybe, oh, maybe the wrong way. There it goes, yeah. So it just tips over like so. Let it go. And then just lock it back. You get it? See, and it just holds right there. And you just easily step out of it. Go ahead, Jax. Get your helmet off. I'll take your helmet off. Okay. And then back here, all you gotta do. Oh, I had it like this before. Oh, it's up here. I just set that there. And you're good. I can get it to stay, but whatever. I was saying I hang the uh, headset up on top of the hook. But you can actually just set it right down right on the seat, which is probably a better idea, because you have your extensions. It lays down just perfect. You can see that. Completely independent. There's your everything float. Seat belts off. So if you have any questions, like I said, feel free to ask, and I will try to help you with whatever. So enjoy. This is a really elegant solution, very light, very stiff, you know, so hopefully that works. We'll report back with some gameplay after I tune it. Enjoy, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.